afternoon. My name is Donna Fiesel, and I'm your host of Afternoon Drive Home on IC Radio, In Christ Radio. Oh. Yeah, we're your source for news and entertainment. You can also find us on television, channel 182 on Charter Communications. Thank you so much for listening every day, Monday through Friday, as I get to ride home with you every day in the afternoon from 1 to 3 p.m. Central Time, by the way. And we do appreciate you listening to us. Now you could be doing anything else, but you're watching us right now. Television again, channel 182 on Charter, and Abundant TV found on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire. We are live at an awesome event, Creekside. 2022. Mm-hmm. My first one. My first one as well. Your first. And I'm going to come back. Me too. Yeah. I plan on being here next year. I'm actually thinking about going to the one in Kentucky, in Corbin. Now, when is that one going to be? I don't know the date. Uh, Tim Griffin, which he and Angela have really, really helped me out. Uh, matter of fact, Tim played piano for the guy who got me in gospel music when he was 17 years old. Mm-hmm. And uh, Tim has played for everybody, and they're real great people. But uh, I think he's the one that told me about it, and I just can't remember the date of it right now. Yeah, well, we're going to have to. Well, maybe we'll see each other there, too. Mm-hmm. Keith Buckhannon is with me right Buchanan. now. Buchanan. 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 It's almost like Fiesel. I'm going to tell you what's yeah. the <laughs> Still holding on. Yes. And so you are a featured author here, a speaker, and singer and do it all so mm-hmm. we appreciate you being with us well, thank now, you. you were telling there's a story you were and let's share it if you don't mind i don't mind I, I i love telling the story about o'reilly auto parts and everybody's familiar with that franchise auto parts store and you just don't think that god could use an auto parts store to get you back into church and back into his will uh, I had met Arthur in my 30s, in my late 30s, and went out. I was his lead singer. Uh, Arthur had sang with everybody through the years. Uh, he was the good newsman. And uh, they traveled everywhere. And like I said, Timmy started playing piano for him when he was 17 years old. And uh, I, like I told you, I purchased a building, made a car lot out of it, and up the road there's a O'Reilly Auto Parts store. So I'm up there one day, and we all talking about music and I let them know that I used to sing lead for a gospel group that's when they tell me the manager plays piano so I'm talking to him and I keep I ask him I say hey I would love to hear you and he says I played Sunday morning Sunday night Wednesday evening at Mayo First Baptist Church the church down the road and the next time I go in I tell him hey I want to hear you I want to get back into gospel music and get my voice right and I want to do some stuff with you well I play Sunday morning Sunday night Wednesday evening so this goes on for about a month till one day I walk in and I tell him that ask him the same thing and he looks me straight in the eye and says, I've told you I play Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday evening that at Mayo in. Baptist Church. Sink in. And I'm a little hard headed, so I gotta be towed twenty or thirty. I am times. too, that's why I said let it sink in. And uh thank God that I decided to go listen to him. And I really get emotional when I talk about that because in the past seven years, God has brought me so far from where I was. I was back out in this world doing things I shouldn't be doing, saying things I shouldn't be saying. And you'll never get a high. And you'll never get enjoyment like you will by doing God's work. And if you've got a calling on your life, you may run today. But eventually, God's going to put you in a position where you're going to do his will. And I just thank God for that auto parts mm-hmm. store up in Chastity, South Carolina, and that old parts man across the county. Well, we're glad to. I am Absolutely. too. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so let's tell us about your music. What style are you? Uh, I, I grew up, uh, I always, I knew at a young age, channel uh, watching Channel 7 on Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock before it got ready to go to church. They would come on, and it would be the Blue Ridge Quartet singing Mm -hmm. Jubilee. Mm -hmm. And I knew then at a young age I wanted to grow up and and be in a quartet. And like I said, in my 30s, I'm an author after. I became his lead singer. We were a trio, and uh, I got away from him and got back out in the world. And I told you a story about Flash, and I'm back in church, and I'm singing, and I'm singing in the choir and everything, and I'm wanting to get back into gospel and get on the road and go out and do God's ministry. And I'm sitting that one night, and the title of the CD is still holding on. And there's a great gospel song by Luther Barnes and the Red Bud Choir, I believe it is. And uh, I listened to that song, and I thought it was a great foundation. 
And I went and recorded it, but I didn't have any other songs. And I was going to do Southern Gospel. Like I mentioned, Tim and Angela Griffin have really helped me out. And Angela calls me one night. She says, hey, I've got a list of songs. They don't work for us, but just listen to them. And God moves in a way that you'll never understand. Every song that she sent me was in my key. They followed suit. They told the same story. And every one of them is now on the CD. That's amazing. Hey, God's amazing. God's amazing. And if you open yourself up and, you know, one of the greatest things we have to learn is we've got to learn how to let go and just give God everything. And when you do that, you'll be more blessed than you've ever been blessed in your life because you're finally letting go and letting God have his way. And God is a patient man. I'm not. I'm not either. <laughs> I mean, there's times that I've wanted to do this and do that, and I'm I'm entirely in a 360 degree spin doing uh, country gospel, which I never thought I would ever do. Mm-hmm. So that's that's the story about that. That's pretty awesome. You know, we talk about God's timing a lot. You know, which is totally different from my timing. I promise you that. So, how do you, how do you think God's timing and how important is it we go by His timing instead of ours? Because He knows what lies ahead. Uh, God knows all the in and outs you're going to face, and what God knows happen? when you're ready. You know, we may sit here and think that I'm ready to do this and I'm ready to do that, and then we we take over. And we go out and start doing things. It seems that it's all messed up. It's always a disaster. But when you wait on the Lord to provide the way and you just have the patience to do his will, he opens those doors. Uh, He is just amazing of what God will do and what God can do. And I was asked in an interview before this one, if you were able to cross over Jordan and see the Lord today, what would you say to him? And I would have to say, thank you. Thank you for not giving up on me. His grace is so good, is it not? It is. And I wanted to say, ask you another question. And this, again, is this pertains to timing because we know we're supposed to be doing something, mm-hmm. but we don't know which route to take. How do we find out which route to take, which is the best route, the easiest route? You know, Ours, or do we need to wait on God? Well, I believe we need to wait on God. Like I said, we think that we know it all. <laughs> the older I get, the more I find I know uh, <laughs> and The older I get, I realize how stupid I've been in the past 58 years. I write a book on what not to do. Oh, yeah, what not to do. And I'm 59 years old, stepping, you know, and I, I could hear God's voice in the back of my head telling me, just trust me. Just you step out on faith, and I'll handle the rest. So I, at the age of fifty-nine, I've invested all this money and everything. Got, got the CD, got the sound equipment, and everything, and just got my CDs the other night before we came up here. And uh, he's got a plan, and I know God's in it because the way everything has just fallen in part. And I would say that if you're out there today and you're trying to do everything your way, just Throw your hands up in the air and give up and let God handle it all. And you'll see more doors and more opportunities open up for you than you ever have in your life. When you give God control, that's when you can really move. We're a lot less shoe leather that way, I promise you. Oh, yeah. And a lot less headaches. And a lot less headaches. And and you'll have more hair. There's a lot of great (laughs) gospel singers around here that are bald-headed that used to have a head full of hair. But they, but they got they it. Finally yeah. got to the right they, path. they finally got to the right path. <laughs> I think it's pretty awesome. I mean, everything is about that. You know, I've heard a lot of folks say you need to pray about every single thing you do, whether it's God's work or not. Is that a true statement? I think that yes, you do need to pray about things, but sometimes. You really just need to put it in God's hands and and follow God's advice and follow God's will. And what about following your dreams? And I've heard a lot of folks talk about this this week. They actually had another job. They were doing something else, and they were just not happy. 
they were just very unsatisfying. And I can, I can really tell you a story about, I used to be in the corporate world. And so when I left the corporate world and started doing my own this through God's help, my husband said, welcome back, honey, it's nice to see you. Uh, and I said, was I that hard to live with? He said, no. He said, you led. And I made a lot of money. You know, I really did. But I didn't enjoy it. I was just not happy. I was one miserable human being. Well, you may go find that on the road there. They're just, they're, they're, you would think they got it all together. And they got the perfect job. They got the perfect everything. But they're just not happy. Yeah. Well, I can tell you right now that if you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, you're missing out and that's the biggest point uh, I think that in anything that you do God needs to be in it and I think that sometimes you just need to let go and God let God handle everything we all have dreams but sometimes our dreams aren't in God's plan God's got a different dream for you and if you let him handle everything and just follow in his footsteps. He'll open those doors to where your dream will seem like a nightmare to you. Well, and it almost, because things are happening for us as well here with the show and the station and that kind of thing. And sometimes I'm going, is this really happening? I'm thinking, and, and I'm, I don't question God's will or anything like that. It's just that when you finally turn it over, things start happening. A lot it just of, feels unreal. A lot of people sit and think about okay i want to go out i want to do this for god but yet i've got this bill and i've got that bill and i got this bill and i make That's this right. amount of money and i don't see me making this out here and you know why do most gospel groups spend twenty thousand dollars then go spend another ten thousand in a studio to go play in front of ten people and pick up a hundred dollars it's because we don't do it for the money and that's one of the first things I was taught when I got in this business, if you're doing it for the money, you're in it for the wrong reason. The only way to do this and to do it right is to do it for God's kingdom. And to, there's a, and I say this, and a lot of preachers get upset, but I don't mean any ill harm toward preachers. They do a great, wonderful job, but singing is a ministry. And there's people in this world that just will not step foot in the church and hear a minister or a preacher preach but they will travel a hundred miles to hear a group. No matter how good they are or how bad they are, they're still out there and they'll go and they'll hear a message. And maybe, maybe they'll hear one thing in a song that will get them up out of that seat and bring them to the altar and to God's kingdom. Absolutely, because music has always been a part of, a big part of my life as well. Not singing or anything like that, but listening to it. And the message that you can get in songs. Are you a songwriter as well? I, I've, I've taken some part on some songs. I've got some songs. God's been giving me songs up here, and I've just never written them down. And I've got to work whenever an idea comes to my hand now, I record it. But uh, a lot of my songs on the CD are Sandy Bloomer, uh, Fawn Jacobs, who was here last night, and I got to meet her. Her, she and Sandy Bloomer are the songwriters on a song that I did that the Oak Ridge Boys was going to record. It's the first one called Come to the War. It talks about the woman at the well. And then uh, another gentleman by the name of Mike Owens. I have five of his songs. He's a great songwriter. It seems like everything that this man touches goes to the charts. And uh, he sent me several songs and just every one of them went hand in hand with one another and he's a great songwriter so you know keith is just getting up there and singing the songs god and the songwriters are providing the message to sing out and give to everybody yeah it's one unit i mean and, and that's how it is you know sometimes you can have the best sounding or you can have the best words to a song whatsoever but it's the vessel that actually sings it that's it you know, bring it to life that's it you got to be able to take those words and and deliver the meaning. It's you know they'll tell you a, a singer is basically a storyteller, mm -hmm. and when you're up on stage, you tell the story of whatever that song mm -hmm. is there to send the message. And you have to portray it in such a way that people are really going to get it. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're singing a song out there, let's just talk. Come to the water when you're singing a song, 
and sometimes people will just look at there's a look they will give you while you're up on the stage and it's like how do you know i was going through this do you get that look from folks i get that look from folks and i can also say that you know there'll be times when you've got a uh a song list prepared but the third song the lord the holy spirit will lay upon you that you need to sing this song because somebody out there is going through something that you don't know about. we as singers never know what the audience is going through and that's the holy spirit's job to take your music and what you say and to reach that one person, and like I said, there's people that'll go to church that won't go to church and hear a preacher, but they'll come here singing. Mm -hmm. And they take the Holy Spirit takes that message and lays it upon the heart of that person out there in that audience. Mm -hmm. And it's an amazing marriage between the two. Mm -hmm. Because when you get up and sing, you don't know what people are going through out there. I mean, they may have a smile on their face, but you don't know the if they lost a loved one that morning. In the world, the one. Yes. They look like they got it all together. The, the one person that's walking around laughing, carrying on, is probably the most hurt individual in the room. Putting on a mask. Putting on a mask. I, I, I do it a lot. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I have too. I think everybody has, you know, you because this is what you're taught. <laughs> you know, you put your best foot forward, but sometimes that best foot just doesn't want to come forward. A lot of times we want to walk the straight and narrow way, but we kept moving to the left or we kept moving to the right and we didn't go down the straight way that God had, you know, made for us. And when we step to the right or step to the left, we come across every obstacle in the world, but God's pathway is straight and clear. Keith, you and I are, we're boots on the ground. We know what's happening in the real world out there. It seems like everything's in chaos. What are you seeing out there? Uh... I see the devil doing a mighty work before his time. Scrambling around. Don't don't be fooled, folks, that Satan knows that his day is coming. He knows that the time is at hand. And he knows where he's headed. And he's trying to get as many people to go with him as possible. So don't be fooled by the lies. Don't be fooled by the devil. Just keep your faith in Jesus and keep your eyes on the pathway and he'll never leave you. You know, friends will leave you, family will turn on you, but thank God, Jesus always forgives. Absolutely he does. What if, what if Jesus forgave like you and I did? I wouldn't have much of a chance. They'd have I mean, to build another hell, wouldn't they? They really would. <laughs> <laughs> There'd be two of them. <laughs> but seriously, folks, uh, if you're out there today and you're going through something, you don't have to get on your knees to pray. You can walk around the house and talk to God just like she and I are speaking right here. And that's what I do. And I that's what I do. Talk to him. Just... I'll be taking a shower and I'll just, just say, God, thank you for the day. Folks don't realize how lucky they are in these times. You know, we're still able to get up on Sunday morning. We're still able to go on Sunday evening and Wednesday evening to a building and worship our Lord and Savior. And there's coming a day, and I don't think it's too far off, where you're not going to have that building to go to, where you're not going to be able to serve God like you want to. You'll be persecuted. We got a glimpse of that when COVID hit. We got a glimpse of it when of what COVID it could hit. Be like. Of what it could be like. I didn't like it either. I, I, I like being in a group of people. Uh, and, 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 you know, a lot of the Facebook lives that churches are doing, that's great for folks who really can't get out. But some of us use it for an excuse. When COVID hit, you saw a lot of churches where they didn't have service on Sunday morning. And I really think that the devil was in all that. Folks, you got to understand, the devil don't care about you going to church. He don't care about how much money you put in an offering plate. He don't care about these singers getting up and singing. What he does care about is when you start going after the blood that Jesus Christ shed on that cross for you. That's what really makes him mad. When you start giving it all to God. When you start giving it all to God and you start doing God's will, that's when you see the devil. 
You know something, I want to mention this to you as well. Okay, a lot of folks watch nonstop news 24-7 and wish that had never been invented. I don't care what network it is. You can't sit and listen to that all day long. I no. think that's why we're seeing so many depressed people. You know the greatest newspaper that ever, ever was written? Which one? It's the Bible. Mark, May, excuse me, not Mark, but Matthew 24, when Jesus is sitting with the disciples on the mount and they asked him about some signs of the second coming. <laughs> Folks, if you don't believe me, turn to your Bible today, go to my, Matthew 24 and read the whole chapter. And if it doesn't seem like it's modern day, where son will come against father, mother against daughter, you're seeing it in the world today, there'll be talks of war and rumors of war, you're having that today. Jesus tells you, no man knoweth the hour, not even the angels of heaven. But know when it's nigh, knocking at the door. Folks, he's not knocking on the door today. He's pounding. He's busting it down. And he's, he's busting it down, and he's ready to come gather his people and put an end to Satan's reign. You know, something else is the great divider. You know, you divide and conquer is the way he works. It's been going on for generations of this, centuries of this. You know, you have rulers who, that's how they actually rule over people. It's conquer and divide. That's how we're going to take over. And I'm seeing a lot of that lately. But I'm going to tell you something. You know, you hear people say, well, people from California are crazy. We're from Alabama. We're not crazy. You know what? I've met a lot of people from California who are as conservative as I am. Yes. You can't believe everything you hear and everything you read and everything you see. When, so all, decide, when all else fails, go to the scripture. It, it'll amazing. never, it'll Mary never. James. Oh, Lord. Do you know Mary James? Yes. Mary James is from California. Okay, so she, I'll go to a Calvary church in, in Alabama, in Fort Payne. And so she comes to the church and she said, I just want to get this out in the open. I'm from California. And we're all like, <gasps> Because all the things you hear about Californians, and she said, "There's a lot of conservatism, conservatism in California. It's just not being promoted." You wouldn't she think said, it, would you? It, you wouldn't think it, but there is. There's, a, I mean, there are so many conservative ministers out there. It's unreal. A lot of churches have bent over for the devil nowadays, and I, I'm sorry. Uh, you can hate me, you can be against me, but if it's in that Bible and God says it, that's it. You've heard that. If God said it, that's it. It's finished. Well, I'm a, I'm, 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 a, I'm a firm believer. And, and if you don't believe that, then I would ask you to check your salvation. Because there's, there's well, they say there's, well, there's other religions. There's not but one religion. The Bible teaches you there's only one religion and one God. I love travel shows because I love to travel. Well, there's one that I won't mention who it is, but there's a travel show that comes on. It's on APT Network. And I used to love to watch the show, but then he was, was in another country and it was Muslims. And he's supposed to be a Christian, mm -hmm. this guy is. He says he's a Catholic. He was bound down to Allah just like they were, and he made it appear that the God of your choice, I don't see it that way at all. I don't think there are many gods. I don't think that because you're a Muslim that that's the way. I don't think because you're a Christian, I think because you're a Christian that is the way. But there are so many divisions that it's dividing folks, it's confusing to people. Well, that's what the devil does. He is one of the greatest disguisers oh, and he impersonators and dividers of anybody. There's a lot of stuff that Satan is great of. Apparently it's the wrong stuff. He's one of the greatest liars. liars. He's one of the greatest uh, disguise artists. You know, the Bible says he'll, you know, when Satan wants you, he'll come, he, I, I, I kind of reference it as a mouse in the house. You know, you get a mouse, he'll he'll find a little crack to come through and you'll go over and you'll stick some steel wool in that hole and, well, I got rid of him. Next thing you know, uh -huh. you look over here in another <laughs> place and he's come through again and then he's come through again. Satan is going to come at you through your family, through your friends, and folks, it's all right. If you've got friends and you've got family that keeps you out of the will of God, it's okay to put them to the side. Remember, only you are going to stay in judgment 
on that day. You can't answer for anybody else. You they can't, can't answer, answer for you, and they won't answer for you. So, Baptist, <laughs> I'm telling you right now, you're only going to stand for yourself on Judgment Day. So quit worrying about what Susie or Bob is doing. And don't worry about it and just worry about yourself and give it all to God. Well, Satan knows what your weakness is. My weakness is that I want everybody to like me. <laughs> and I'll bend over backwards so that they will. And so Phil says, my husband says, he says you know, what it is, he said, you've got this heart that's huge and you want everybody to like you. And that's how he enters in with you. Because I get real mm -hmm. discouraged. Somebody I think's a friend mm -hmm. and then... They've used me for some reason or whatever, and, and then they're not a friend anymore. It just tears me up. It feels as a Satan in you. He knows that's he knows that's what your weak spot is. He right knows there. your weakness, but thank God I know a strength conditioner, and his name is Jesus Christ. And if you best just put the best friend you'll ever have, he's the only guy that will never ever turn you away. Sometimes when you get back out in this world, and I know I had to do it, uh, you've heard the story of the boy who cries wolf. Yes. <laughs> and uh, we as Christians cry wolf so many times. God, if you'll just do get me out of this situation, I'll I'll, I'll go out, I'll do for you, I'll, I'll sing for you. Have you ever heard that? I'll, I'll do it's this God's and I'll do that. It's God's fault because I made a mistake. It's God's fault God's I made a mistake. God, if you <laughs> get me out of this, stuff. if you get me out of this situation, I, I'm in church I'll be every good single from day. Now on. And then when he gets you out of the situation, the next thing you know, you're back out in the world doing the same thing that he got you out of. Mm -hmm. So we've got to learn. Like you said, you got a hard head, so do I. Sometimes I have to learn the hard way. I could write you a book on what not to oh, do. Oh, yeah. And sometimes when you do that and when you finally get back to your senses and realize that you're never going to get anywhere, you're never going to do anything without God's will, sometimes you got to prove yourself to him. And I had to prove I'd go to him and I felt like he was a million miles away, but I would hear in the back of my mind, He's Prove not it. a millionaire miles away. I've heard this are. before. I've heard this before. Prove it. Mm -hmm. Prove it. Prove you want me. Mm -hmm. And just you just have to keep going back to him and going back to him and going back to him and proving yourself. Absolutely. You know what? Twenty nine minutes flies. We we have less than is, two. Is minutes. it over? It's already almost, almost, almost. It's you my got to tell right. everybody. There we go. Yeah, you did a great job, Keith. <laughs> you got to tell everybody how to find your music. You can find my music on uh, www.keithbuchanan.net. Uh, Angela Griffin, uh, God bless this girl. She has really handled everything from start to finish. Uh, where I didn't have any direction, she has helped me. Tim, her husband, great pianist has played with everybody in gospel music, helped me get my sound equipment, you know, and everything. Josh Harrell, the tenor singer for the Griffins, comes by my shop, goes out on my first singing, sets up my sound system, does everything. Now that's a so <laughs> these guys are real friends and have really helped me um, get on the road. So she and designed this cover. She designed the cover, really the CD nice. cover. All the graphics she did, the photographs she did, uh, my banners, everything. So if you ever need anything, Angela Griffin with the Griffins is your girl to go to. Still holding on. Still holding on. Thank and God he's still Keith. holding on. Thank you, Keith, so much for being on the Thank show you. Today. Thank you for having me. Thank you for watching. My name is Donna Fiesel, and I'm your host of Afternoon Drive Home. Again, thank you so much for watching every day, Monday through Friday from 1 to 3 p.m. Central Time, as I get to ride home with you in the afternoon. Stay tuned for the weather report coming up and the traffic report coming up in every morning, bright and early. You take care, and it's so good to be with you.